respected judges, friends and colleagues, a very good morning to one and all. We are here to present a case of encephalopathy. 15 year old male came to us with the chief complaints of fever since 15 days, seizures since 5 days, and altered behavior since 2 days. Fever was intermittent, not associated with chills and riders, no rising temperature was seen. It was associated with headache, vomiting, and myalgia. Seizures, multiple episodes, generalized tonic tonic in nature. Altered behavior, he was drowsy, progressing to aggressive behavior. He, gave, he was having treatment for entry fever at other hospital. There is no history of TB or other chronic illness. Drug history was noted. He was immunized till date. On examination, his vitals were stable. He was febrile and tachypnic. No liquid neuropathy, pallor was present. Serious examination, he was conscious but irritable, obeying verbal commands. Cranial of examination were normal. Motor system, bulb, tone, and reflexes were normal. Power on the left side, heavy balances of grade 3 was present. Sensory and cerebellum examination was normal. Signs of meningeal irritation were present. On fundoscopy, papillary of grade 2 was present. Therefore, based on this, our provisional diagnosis was it could be a case of subacute meningeal encephalitis, vascular involvement, TB, or viral. Therefore, we started meningitis protocol. On investigations, routine investigations were normal. CSF analysis also surprisingly was normal. MRI hyperintense lesion was seen in the right temporoparietal lobe. Based on this, our final diagnosis was it is a case of subacute meningeal encephalitis viral in origin. We gave him antivirals, he was uh, showing improvement and we discharged him. But he came again after 10 days. This time, increased weakness in the left side and vision was involved as well. Symptoms appeared acutely, headache and vomiting was present. Examination, left hemiplegia, left homotivous hemianopia and left partial motor seizures were present. We thought of progressive viral encephalitis or autoimmune encephalitis. Investigations, hemogram was normal, papillary edema persisted. CSF serology, aseptic, ANA profile normal, EEG, right front operator, epileptic form activity was present. MRI, as you can see, hyperintense region increased, involving occipital lobe as well. MRI angiography was normal. Based on this, we considered Erasmus encephalitis. We gave him IVIG for 5 days. He showed improvement, we discharged him. Is that it? Not really. He came for the third time, this time involving memory as well. Vision was impaired, he had forgetfulness. We investigated for serum CPK levels, muscle biopsy, serum lactate and pyruvate levels. MRI hyperintense lesion was seen in opposite side as well. MR spectroscopy showed increased levels of lactate levels. Based on this, taking into consideration of multiple stroke like episodes, encephalopathy, seizures, fatigability, and dramatic increase in lactate levels in serum and CSF, we considered MELAS, mitochondrial encephalopathy, lactic acidosis with stroke like episodes. This patient went with the criteria for MELAS and we managed him with uh, symptomatic lean points and Q, antioxidants, multivitamins. Presently, he progressed to myopathy and is being treated in Astra Hospital. Thank you. Why mm. mitochondria should produce all these things? Why mitochondria produce all these things? Why? Because the, mm. we are the powerhouse of the cell. We are responsible for production of energy. Mm. And, and energy. And if all the, every cell in the body works on the energy metabolism. And if the energy is not met, with all the, it leads to uh, mighty organ dysfunction. Mostly involving the CNS and the skeletal muscles. Mm -hmm. And the characteristic feature is multiple stroke like episodes within Melas, and here we had multiple stroke like episodes, and lactate levels were also dramatically increased. So we considered mitochondria. Why is coming intermittently then? Mitochondria, they, they always function, every unit they function to produce energy ATP. Then the symptoms are intermittent. Why? You had the nun, you had the episodes. Mm. He was taking antiviral treatment, so... The antiviral is given once he became symptomatic. What triggered? Yes, you are right. There is was the non-vascular distribution of the hyperintensities. <coughs> Recurrent episodes, they can have seizures. They have lactate peak on MRS. Everything fits. There is no doubt. But why is asking you? Why it is intermittent? It should be continuous, no? 
This is because whenever there is infection or fever, metabolic rate increases a lot. Any metabolic trigger or infection, anything precipitates these mitochondrial disorders. Intermittently, they will be normal. Okay? Can you tell who are the conditions where they are intermittent like this? Any trigger precipitates the illness. Again, it subsides. Do you have anything in mind? I'm not going to No, that is one. Any other thing? Prescribed fever, infection, sometimes drugs. Can prescribe. Sickle cell anemia? Sickle cell? Okay, it can, but a toxic cell. Porphyria. Porphyria is prescribed by fever, infection, certain type of drugs. It can also produce encephalopathy, GP syndrome, like picture. Um, why do you consider the loss of sense and The loss of sense because the lesion was progressing and it was also involving the oxygen. Initially it involved the temporal load and then it involved the occipital load. Mm -hmm. And the lesion was only on one side of the cell. But the main and basic pathology is the loss of sense. Ah, right. Yeah, it's not right. Can you do the antibodies? Can you tell the antibodies? Okay. Asmosis, you can tell it. Asmosis, can you do them, you know? 